Hi, welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. Today is Thursday. I hope everyone's enjoying this experiment that I'm trying to go live uh, every day this week. So far, uh, obviously, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday have gone uh, well. When I had this idea to uh, daily vlog, if you will, um, I wanted to make sure that I had on some of my favorite guests, people that uh, I enjoy having a conversation with. If I was going to do this every day, I didn't want it just to be me talking to an inanimate object. Uh, I'd rather talk to some people who have cool things. So if you watched on Monday, Johnny Monaco was here. On Tuesday, we had the great candy debate, which uh, decade was better, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, mystery box over with my friend Jay, Johnny, uh, as Charles Nelson Riley and uh, Michelle. And then yesterday, Wednesday 13, today, Internet providing uh, Sean Clark will stop by. Uh, he's on the road in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's going to do his best to pop in. I think he, he will. And, uh, uh, and if you don't know Sean Clark, uh, you'll get to know him more when he gets here. But if you watch this channel, I have a feeling you know. We're going to do one hour tonight and immediately following the show, the world premiere of My Life on the Road, uh, episode six. Day, day, uh, Day six, if you will. Uh, we're going to talk about all those things and more right after. Remember to get that uh, intro in. Got to get the time and temperature every hour, or uh, you know, the the powers that be will. Uh, here's a first uh, time out of the night. Nice. I didn't think we'd have one of these. <laughs> All right. Um, it's, it's interesting when I'm the model. So I'm going to go see a movie this evening, a brand new uh, movie called Rad. In case you didn't know, today is National Rad Day. I, I mean, it's probably uh, not observed on your calendar. But uh, actually, the movie Rad came out in 1986. And this is an anniversary of that movie. Fathom Events, they put out some cool re-releases supposed to be a remastered remastered uh, movie rad was like a bmx bike thing i didn't really relate to bmx bikes i grew up in the city i didn't learn how to ride a bike until i was over 20 still not very good at it if you saw the episodes where i rode the scooters you know uh it's just not for me driving isn't for me you know it's a i like to walk so anyway but rad i saw it on vhs when i was a kid and uh, I remember vaguely liking it and sort of wishing I could uh, do those uh, bicycle things. Um, but, uh, but I couldn't. Uh, the movie, though, uh, it's, I think it's going to be terrible. When Sean gets here, we'll see what he remembers of it. Uh, but, uh, oh, <laughs> and here's BMX Assembly. I hope you're going to see uh, Rad as well. I, I, I would love to see Sean Clark go to the filming locations of Rad. Maybe he has. We'll ask him. When he gets here, but I am going to see that uh, uh, this evening, as soon as this is done. You guys can go see it too if you can make a seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time start. The best scene in Rad is the romantic bike dance featuring "Send Me an Angel" by the band Real Life. David Sterry, the lead singer and guitarist of Real Life, will be here in the next couple of weeks, live from Australia. So, uh, and then after. That I, I tomorrow I think I'm going to go see this Ghostbusters in the Frozen Tundra. Um, you know, do I think it's going to be the best movie? No, but I feel like there's a certain, uh, uh, for certain, uh, you know, it'll be all right. Uh, and when Sean gets here, we'll see if he goes to see movies like that. Uh, again, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. You could be getting tired of me doing this every single day. Maybe it's just. Uh, a, too much. Who knows? We're going to find out at the end of the week what the totals are, and then I'll decide uh, how much more daily vlogging I do. The hardest part is editing uh, these tour diaries. That is 100% the hardest part. Uh, even though it doesn't look fancy, I, I, I just shoot so much stuff and then have to make cuts. And then, uh, you know, the PMRC, uh, whatever YouTube police are, they are on you for using even a few seconds of a of a music number. So I, I have to sit there and go through that. I think you're gonna to enjoy today's episode, day six. The boat was going back 
uh, to port to Florida. So you spend two days just at sea. On these cruises, people decorate their doors and they put out um, offerings, uh, things that you can take, candy, toys, whatever. And so in this episode, Michelle and I will essentially go trick-or-treating and you will get to see it. Plus a cameo by uh, 38 Special and David Sterry, real life. You'll hear Send Me an Angel in tonight's show. Uh, okay, let's see how everybody is doing here. Uh, David enjoyed the candy episode. Jay says it's definitely not too much. And uh, we're, we're arguing over whether Rad was filmed in Australia or whether it was filmed in Canada. I mean, I don't know. Uh, Justin is debating whether or not to see the new Ghostbusters. He's not a fan of the kid cast they have now. A lot of people don't like when they add new kids to things. They're not the best, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, I still feel like it's entertaining enough. I enjoyed the last one, uh, Afterlife. Uh, I enjoyed it enough. Uh, do I need to see it again? Yeah, probably not. But uh, it was fun. So anyway, we'll see. Uh, uh, yeah. Lorraine says, I should release this, my intro as a single. It's such a bop, Lorraine, uh, talking like the hip young kids. But yes, uh, it will. We're going to put it out. Uh, it's on my album, Sin City Rejects, Death of a Nation. But we will put that song out uh, on a 7-inch soon. We, I've just launched a, a multi-media uh, uh, merch deal. Try to see how many M's I could fit in there at one time. Uh, Angie says she has no life, so she's ready to watch more, which is good. I appreciate that. Um, okay, let's see. And uh, Marcus says, hello from Houston. And uh, when are you going to go live with Wednesday 13 again? Well, he was just here last night. And if Sean Clark doesn't show up, I might have to call him to come in now. Lori Laughlin was in RAD. She is not in jail. I'm not sure she even deserved to go to jail. Uh, there's plenty of people who claim to be billionaires and things who I think would go to jail first, but I don't know. Uh, but she she tried to get her kids into college and she cheated. You know, I mean, maybe she should have been punished, but jail for trying to do the best for your kids. I don't know. Listen, you could argue that she took the opportunity from another kid. Ah, you know what? Screw her. But, uh, uh, but she was hot. She was in a movie called Tough Turf, the band Tough, T-U-F-F, named after that movie fired and uh, she was hot back then and she was hot when she was on uh, full house uh, all right uh, someone says they agree with drizzled which I think means drizzler and I've never seen anyone agree with uh, drizzler again oh can we do the candy with Wednesday we probably should have drizzler maybe I do agree with you dare I say but Wednesday actually was sending me pictures of candy that I totally forgot about there was this really racially incentive candy called cherry clan and it was sort of making fun of charlie chan and it had these asian figures wearing these stereotypical uh, rickshaw pulling kind of hats and i do remember cherry clan i will also tell you that last night i woke up in the middle of the night with my blood sugar very low and uh, i don't want to be like always talking about my diabetes i don't want to be brett michaels and i don't want to be like eddie trunk with ace Frehley, you know every five minutes reminding you but in case you wondered uh, why I don't eat so much of the candy. But last night I woke up, I was low, my blood was down under 69. And I went into the candy from the show and uh, lifted it up. And it was funny to see most of the candy that I'm eating uh, on the emergency stuff that we got on the boat. And you'll see that. In tonight's episode, I do have my candy cigarettes here uh, in the event that uh, Sean doesn't show up. Drive me to smoke. Oh, wait a second. I take it back. It looks like he is here. Let's go live right now to Sean Clark. What? Hey, what's up, dude? Where are you at? I'm at the Sharonville Convention Center setting up for Horror Hound Weekend. Nice. And who, who's, uh, who's at Horror Hound this weekend? I don't think you can see that. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, boy. Uh, James Jude Courtney, Rowan Campbell, Eli Roth. Uh, the, there's a Cabin Fever reunion with the whole cast of Cabin Fever. 
There's uh let's see, what else is there? Um uh shit, I'm th forgetting who else. uh Oh, uh, Sam Raimi and Ivan Raimi and Ted Raimi, and they're all here, um, the Raimi brothers. Um, gosh, uh, as far as people I have, other than the Halloween people I just mentioned, there's uh, the two girls from the last Exorcist movie, the two girls that got possessed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, gosh, uh, Zach Galligan, there's a reanimator reunion, Anna from Beyond Reunion, so Jeffrey Combs, Ken Foray, Bruce Abbott, Barbara Crampton, Brian Yuzna, Charlie Band, Richard Band. So all kinds of, man, there's just a lot of people. So I'm, if you're I'm, in this, I'm in a big empty room at the moment. We're doing setup. I can see that, yeah. You're very hands-on still. Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, that's why I got my, got my suitcase full of stuff that I'm, I'm setting up. And uh, if you want, I can walk around a little bit while we talk and you can see this place is huge, man. And this this has always been what I'd say is the biggest horror con in the world. But it definitely got bigger because the convention center just expanded. And it's like a whole nother giant ballroom filled. Uh, you know, this room here is the main celebrity room. So this is just going to be filled with like all the the tables around the edges are all going to be filled with celebrities and this whole center is just going to be line cues. Um, it's two levels downstairs is a film festival and uh, there's a big food court downstairs, which is one of the things I really love about this show is you don't have to, um, you don't have to eat the crappy convention food. Like they have like gourmet people, they bring in food. Mm -hmm. So this is the, you can see this is the lower level I'm talking about. It's down there, down those stairs. <sighs> I'll walk back over and show you where the the convention is setting up. There's a tattoo room. This is the Q and A room here. It looks like they've got it all covered. Oh, dude, this. I mean, this is a big show. You can see. Am I coming through good and everything? Yeah. No, you've got you've got a great reception. Carlos Cavazo could be a few miles away from me, and I, he would have no internet. But you, <laughs> on the other hand, uh, is perfect. You're in Cincinnati, right? Uh, well, it's technically Sharonville. Or Sharonville. Yeah. But if anyone watching is in the area, you can probably get over there this weekend and meet some cool people. Sharonville Convention Center. Yeah. Uh, and and Sean, let me try to explain in case somebody's new who's watching. Sean Clark uh, has a convention talent agency, Convention All Stars, right, Sean? Mm -hmm. And uh, Sean also uh, runs, uh, uh, well, he has a thing called Horrors Hollowed Grounds. I think that's how most people know you. Sean, you're, you're, you, you remind me of myself and a lot of my friends. You don't have one thing to describe you with. Um, it's, you can't yeah. just say Sean does this. He, he does a lot of uh, different things. And so uh, Horrors Hollow Grounds is where he goes to various um, filming locations. It's actually one of my favorite series on YouTube. And then uh, that's Malfunction. If you want to check out Malfunction. He's showing us around. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the tattoo room. Uh, there's also some vendors in here, too, as you can see over here. I mean, Do they're a lot of people setting up. Do a lot oh. of people get tattoos at conventions now? Surprisingly, yeah. Probably a lot of signatures, right? Oh yeah, there's that too. Yeah. Yeah, I can but, see people yeah, a lot of vendors. Too. There's a Beetlejuice shirt up there. I think you'd love that one. Mm -hmm. You can see it up there. <laughs> uh, Are you let's see. Now I'm going into the main convention hall, dude. This thing oh, is wow. massive. Wait till you see the size of this thing. All right, so. Oh, yeah. This is just once. Hey, there's Nathan, who owns Horror Hound. Say hi. hi. Nice. Uh, hey. Nathan owns Horror Hound. He runs it with uh, Jeremy. They own it together. Um, but look, look at the size of this place. I mean, this is out of control. This and is what you need, though, for these shows. If you don't have a big place with wide aisles, everyone's going to be on top of each other. It's a nightmare. Yeah, and what's one thing that's great about this, since they did the expansion, the aisles are really nice and wide, as you can see. 
they're just people are just setting up right now. But look at all the rows here. There's Matt from Trick or Treat Studios. Nice. <laughs> see Trick or Treat Studios. You can't see the logo. The chair's hiding it, but you know. Mm -hmm. um, but just look at this, dude. Look at how how many freaking how big this thing is. I mean, you know, it's, it's nuts. We're and now we're at about the halfway mark of the size of this convention center. And I mean, look, it just keeps going. You've look watched these, these. Look at all you've these Hellraiser boxes. Oh, wow. <laughs> you've watched it grow, Sean, because you've been going to this show for quite some time, right? Oh yeah, I, I, I mean, I've been going to this one since the very first one they did. And they used to be in a little hotel across the street, which was tiny. Look at some of the, look at some of those great. Are you familiar with Gary Pollan, the artist? I don't think I am. I mean, look, check out. He's got some amazing pieces here. Wow! Yeah. Let me go to a solo layout of Sean. Really nice stuff. Yeah, that's that's Gary Pollan, and then. I don't know who this artist is. Oh, I'm digging on this Halloween three poster though. Check that out. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, very cool. I need that. If you're if you're a Jenna Ortega fan, Adam's yeah. family, some Frankenstein. I do have that Lost Boys poster right there. That's a good one. Sean, do you still feel like you go home with a lot of stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Big time. It's, you know, you know who Jason Edmondson is, the artist. Yeah. He just, mm -hmm. uh, here's his booth. He's here this weekend. Wow, that's great. I, I love that creature poster. I have that sign somewhere. Oh yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. And he's got, you know, he did all the art for the Halloween pinball machine. Mm -hmm. So, some good stuff. Yeah, that's the hard thing about uh, uh, selling what you love. Uh, uh, it's like uh, when they say, "Don't sell your, don't use your own supply." Uh, you know, you you you're in an industry that you enjoy the stuff. Yeah, here's a couple of tables already started setting up. Jeffrey Combs from Reanimator, from Beyond, Frighteners, Star Trek, uh, and if you're a Reanimator fan, Bruce Abbott, he's going to be here this weekend as well. Oh. And I then, love these different stuff they have. Yeah, there's so many different genres mixed up now. I, I like that. It, I think it makes it more interesting. And there's a, I was telling you about the girls from the new Exorcist film. Mm -hmm. uh, Olivia O'Neill and Lydia Jouette. They're both here this weekend. And Samara Lee, who is, who is Annabelle. She was, uh, she played B, the girl that basically is Annabelle. In the Conjuring universe, mm -hmm. so yeah. And then let's see over here. I'm just giving you the full tour, or the most of the tour. This section over here, this is going to be the photo ops area. So this is all for, you know, the whole photo op line queue, and the booths are over there. So that's it. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna take a seat so we can actually talk a little bit. Yeah. You don't get to sit down much when it's a show weekend. No, I mean, you know, I'm working. I've got a bunch of clients here, and I got to uh, set tables up and all that nonsense. But, uh, but you know, it's 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 a living, man. You know, this is how my tour shows, diary right here. How, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. How many shows a year do you think you'll go to? Like roughly. Uh, God, let me see. How many weekends are there in a year? Was it 54? Is that right? I think or that's it. weeks? I mean, weeks. Is it 54 weeks? I don't know. I can't even. I don't know. No what's, what's 12 times 4? <laughs> 48. I don't know. Anyway, I, I'm I'm probably uh, every, at least three times a month am I gone. So I got about one weekend off a month, probably, on average. And you have a staff that works for you. Your girlfriend also runs a lot of the, of the business as well. So yeah, uh, yeah it, it's not something you could do by yourself. I, Sean, I was thinking about how conventions have grown. When you and I would go to conventions, you know, we mm -hmm. didn't know each other yet, but going back 20 years or more, so the Beverly Garland and 
a lot of the uh, a lot of these celebrities were charged five dollars for a black and white photo and ten dollars for a color photo. It's uh, it's a you know, and you and you met legends. I mean, you could meet Don Knotts and Norman Fell and uh, and tons of other ones that you know were older. Most of these people are gone. I used to always say, "What's going to happen when most of these older legends have passed? Will younger people brace on to conventions?" I thought the answer would be no because they made so much money. But that is not the case. Nowadays, nobody surprises me if they do a convention or a private signing. It's become pretty accepted. Yeah, yeah. I remember paying $20 for Don Knotts autograph. <laughs> uh, I'd gladly pay 10 times that now, you know? So Yeah. The market yeah. has changed. And sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel like some people are pricing themselves out. I feel like you've always done a good job recommending to your clients what's fair and what's market value and you've said it before on this show too that maybe people would buy more than one thing if your price was reasonable a lot of the people that you represent are, are known for being personable the screen yeah. cast matthew lillard is like top level star everybody loves him i know um five nights at freddy is in addition to scooby-doo and screen but everyone loves him and he takes the time to talk with these people and, and the other screen members as well. So your people seem to get what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I sometimes have to fight with them a little bit on the prices. I'm trying to see if I can get my phone to stand up on its own. <laughs> um, but you know, at the end of the day, they usually take my advice, you know, there we go. They usually take my advice and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I try to be as fan friendly as possible, you know, so and that helps because you're, you're a fan yourself. And I think that helps you have mm -hmm. an understanding, uh, as, as a collector where at some point someone might be crazy. I'm thinking about going to this steel con in a couple of weeks. John Carpenter's prices are $125. It seems very steep. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's high. I do, um, but you know, uh, it, that's his call. You know, I don't work with him, so it's not. You know, that's not. I, I can only, and that's the thing. At the end of the day, even whoever represents him, at the end of the day, it's their decision. That uh, you know, even though it's my company, uh, at the end of the day, the the, the client is is sort of the boss you know what i mean and and if they i can say hey i think you should be 50 dollars, and they say oh i want to be 80. all i can do is say well i'm just telling you where i feel you would do the best and you know take it for what it's worth you know and it is yeah. what it is the one place i think he could have charged 125 dollars would have been at your uh, uh halloween convention halloween 45. He shows up and doesn't sign autographs. He would have been like the president there. Yeah. What's that beeping sound? You hearing that? Yeah, it's my diabetic alarm. You, wanna, oh. you talk for one second while I turn it off. Hold on. <laughs> okay. You're in charge, Sean. No, <laughs> no problem. So, guys, if you are in the Sharonville, Cincinnati, Ohio area this weekend, starting tomorrow, 5 p.m., Horror Hound Weekend. Go to horrorhoundweekend.com. Check out the lineup. Come on down. It's a party. It's going to be a lot of fun. And as far as there's only one musician here this weekend. Um, that's it. Lars Fredrick Fredrickson from uh, Rancid. Is it Rancid? Rancid I think? Yeah. 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 He's here this weekend. Uh, not too many musicians at this show this time, but the next horror hound in the same location, I can't really divulge who's coming, but there are going to be a nice group of musicians, including a first timer. Uh, next September, a legend, a legend. Uh, I'll say, never done a convention, never done a convention. That's all I can say. A, mu a musician legend. A musician legend, and it's not a singer. It's not a singer. So, hmm. I'm, I'm I'll tell, to I'll tell you, I'll tell you off camera. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, but definitely, uh, if if. I'll, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to give any hints because I'll, I'll blow it. So. <laughs> All right. See, this is why I like to have people like you on, Sean, because if the moment comes, you can just talk yourself 
you do your own show. Uh, it's a show called The Thing with Two Heads with Oscar winner Christopher Nelson. And it's a fun show if you just like some horror talk. Two guys talking about horror. You talk about other things as well. well that last episode, we barely talked about horror. And what Jamie yeah, Kennedy yeah, yeah. we were just we were just talking all kinds of stuff. So I think that's what people like, though. When they watch these kind of things, they begin to like the personalities. And so, uh, you know, you, you can only talk about the same things so many times. Mm. Um, is it? Uh, can we mention uh, this mad monster thing yet, or not completely? You know what? I say just do it. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if they've announced him yet. I, I'm not sure. I haven't checked, but uh, I know they're going to shortly. So I think I think it's safe to go ahead and say that Stephen Piercy is going to be appearing at Mad Monster Party Arizona in July with Ozzy Osbourne and family. So yep. uh, oddly enough, the first time I saw Rat in concert was the first time I saw Ozzy, and that was out of the cellar tour opening for Ozzy on Bark at the Moon. And now I'm working with both singers. I was a 14 year old kid at Long Beach Arena. And now uh, dreams come true, people. So absolutely. I think this is going to be really cool. It's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days in Arizona. The cast of Scream is there as well. Most of them. Yeah. And uh, and uh, yeah, Stephen Pearcy and Ozzy Osbourne. It'd be a rat uh, Ozzy um, reunion. and. Hopefully it'll be the first of many of these type of things that uh, Steven's involved in. I think there's a few big names that do conventions. Alice Cooper, mm. Gene Simmons, obviously Ozzy, Steven, Ace Freely. One day it'd be nice someone did a show where you get all these guys. Now, you don't represent all these people, but would, what an amazing convention it would be with those kind of um, rock icons. Yeah, I mean, I definitely would love to see Ozzy and Alice at the same show. That would be that would be a you know, um, I don't rep Alice, um, but that would be a cool. I'd love to see that duo photo op. You know, come on, yes. that would be that. That's, I, I don't think you get any bigger than those two guys in the hard rock world. Um, that would be pretty, yeah, what's that? And the influence that they had on everybody and, and, and horror movies too. Yeah, I was gonna say, and both in horror movies too. So yeah, that's 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 a cool connection. Be great if we could get Dave, Dave King from Fastway, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, also flogging Molly there, the voice of Sammy Kerr. That'd be great. Yeah, have you ever approached him? No, I mean, flogging Molly's a pretty big band, and and they yeah. tour a lot, so. Something tells me he wouldn't be interested, but I, I heard they reached out to him for the Blu-ray release, and I heard he was receptive. I don't know if anything ever came of it, but like I know they wanted to interview him for that uh, potential uh, Blu-ray release of Trick or Treat. So yeah. I, I know there's been some holdups on that. He would be great because the actor is dead. Uh, it would be great to have, have the voice. Sean, I was talking about this convention that I'm thinking about going to. The now, have you, Con. Yeah, and you do that. You've done a lot of business there and, and have guests from time to time. Have you been paying attention to this Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis uh, uh, debate? Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, pictures. The, the, the Susan Sarandon, Gina Davis debacle. Yeah. yeah I, have, I, 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 have pictures. I mean, come on. That, that's well, just... How do you tell fans, here, go on the other side of this, out of our view, to pose for a photo? I mean, that's, I'm sorry, but for me, any client that wanted to do that, I would say, best of luck to you. It ain't going to be with me. I wouldn't want my name attached to that. That's as, what I a, would you do. Know, for what I do. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Uh, and I'll show the pictures in a second so people can see what we're talking about. But I went to a show in Chicago, and Susan Sarandon was there, and she was in a tent by herself. Not Maybe not that strange, but I think she did less business in that tent. I think a lot of people didn't really know she was in there. Um, you would go in, and then they would tell you that she doesn't write character names, but she will write quotes. Okay. And then you get to her, and she's in a bank teller window, and you slide your item underneath, and... Uh, and it, it's a strange experience. But she signed. You saw her. She was nice enough. The next day, they did a photo op of her and Barry Boswick together, who's incredibly nice. And they put a X on the floor where you stand. And so you would stand here. 
and then there'd be a huge gap, and then Barry Boswick and Susan Sarandon would stand here. They didn't warn you that this was going to happen. Well, a lot of the convention promoters were upset and said that at this upcoming show with Susan Sarandon and Gina Davis for Thelma and Louise photos, there will be no divider. And I'm going to show a photo here. Uh, the, the people in the photo are blurred out. This is not my photo, but uh, so he, <laughs> the, the people in <laughs> The people in green are the people who paid. And I believe they paid over $200 for this opportunity. That wall is so high that they probably never actually saw Susan Sarandon or Gina Davis. Here's another example uh, without people. Um, it, it really doesn't feel like a photo op. Um, no. So Steve like, Kahn. Uh, we assure you, Gina Davis and Susan Sarandon are on the other side of this. Yes. Pay no attention to the women behind the boxes. So yeah. Steel Con promises there'd be no divider. They were very upset. The promoter of this 90s con was upset. This is what they are saying the photos are going to look at look like at Steel Con. I wouldn't pay for this either. No, it, it, it's this. It just looks awkward, man. Why even bother doing it? If, if you don't want to be near your fans, why do it? I mean, it, it's it's that is. I'm sorry. One time I had a client who she it, it was coming out of COVID and she had health issues. And uh, I'll just say who it is because she died. Uh, Carol, Carol Lockettel from uh, she was Ma from uh, Friday 13th, part five. And um, so she was wearing a mask all weekend. Well, she had scheduled to do this costume photo op where she, you know, she puts on the costume and the guy who plays her son, he puts on his costume. And we had the guy, Tom Morgan, who played Jason. He was in costume. And she, you know, she was worried about, the, you know, the interaction. So what we did, my idea was, look, we'll have Jason here, Junior here. You're all the way at the end. You're okay being next to them, right? So we'll have the fan come in and put their arm around them. And you're, you're still a good distance away, you know? And and that's how we made that work. Now, mind you, she didn't die of COVID, so <laughs> I don't. She she had cancer, um, yeah. but she was trying to protect her overall uh, health. Sarandon did that with Tim Curry. She put the poor guy in a wheelchair between her and the guest. I mean, Tim Curry should probably be careful with his health too. I see that Clive Barker is getting ready to do a farewell tour of appearances. And he's advertised that he's going to wear, he wants fans to wear a mask before they approach him. People are upset about it, but he's in bad health. And uh, it's a I miracle. Love Clive. I, lo I, I love Clive, been a fan forever, known him a long time. Um, uh, it breaks my heart to see the condition he's in. I saw him at a convention. The last time I saw Clive in person and we spoke was. I think in 2018, 17 or 18, okay? He looked so bad, I was sure he wouldn't be around the next year. I can't imagine six years later that, oh my God, I, I, I don't want to see, I, I don't want to see how he looks right now. I, and I, you know, I understand, I mean, I hope that, he's in the right frame of mind that he's making these decisions on his own. And, you know, cause sometimes you can always wonder about when somebody is, you know, like the, what was going on with Stan Lee at the end of his life, you know, um, yeah. that was well documented that he was being sort of abused in a way and taken advantage of. I don't think, I hope that that's not the situation with Clive. I, I mean, I, I don't think so. I, but the, but I'll be honest with you when I, I mean, when I, I'm just as basing off of the condition he was in when I saw him like six years ago, I was thinking to myself, I couldn't in good conscience bring this guy to a show. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't, um, you know, and in fact, um, Sid Haig approached me to represent him, uh, in the last two years of his life. And I declined because I looked at him and thought the same thing like this guy's gonna die at a convention this guy i mean he should not be here he he looked so gaunt and sickly and i it was they was it I, 
I felt terrible and I didn't want to be the guy dragging him out. You know what I mean? So you, I, yeah, you, the you point where you got to, you, you got to make that decision. I did it with Ted white, you know, with Ted white's it. dementia got so bad. I said, look, man, you, you need to hang it up. This is, you, you know, and I had the talk with his wife and we, his wife and I decided together that, that he couldn't do it anymore. You know? Yeah, it's a it's a hard thing because people want to make the extra money, and you know people want don't want to admit that their health has failed so bad, especially with something like dementia, where you're not even completely aware of uh, uh, how bad um, the health is. But yeah, you've made some ethical decisions. We've talked about a lot of clients that you wouldn't take on, Shelley Duvall, people like that who who suffer from illness. You know, yeah. um, it's not a secret. Well, there's a client that I'm not going to say who it is. But I stopped working with a client uh, a couple of years ago because her dementia was getting so bad. And there's somebody who's still been booking her. Um, I, I think she's canceled the last couple. I don't know what her current condition is, um, but I don't want to out her as having these issues. Um, but, you know, uh, someday I'll talk about it more, you know, maybe when she's left this world. Um Hopefully that's later than sooner, but you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. I mean, I had, she couldn't find her hotel room. She was completely lost in the hotel the last time I booked her. And she was, she asked me like 10 times what time her car was picking her up. And I'm like, I, I literally just told you, and I, you know, I wrote it down for you and you're asking me again, it was like clear that she was, you know, and, and you have to wonder, you know, can they even get home if they got a connecting flight? You know, what are they going to get stuck in an airport somewhere? You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know. Well, it becomes a full-time job and, and, and you know, you're wrangling personalities and people. And a lot of people have done this a lot, so it's different. But when you have someone who's older and have health concerns, it is something. And it, it is the decisions that you've made in good conscience. Uh, not everybody um, sees that. You have a, a, a real full... Uh, uh, alignment of people you have a lot or do you represent you don't need to risk somebody's health or have that on your reputation yeah i brought someone to a convention who really shouldn't have been uh, been there well i've i've seen so many guests at shows that that i thought to myself my god you know they should not be here they just shouldn't they look at them they they and again if that person really wants to be there then God bless them, you know, like it, it, it's even though there was all the reports of the, the, the abuse of Stan Lee, I will say Stan Lee always looked like he was having a good time. Yeah. Um, and he he you could tell he, he genuinely loved the love he was receiving from the fans. And maybe that was good for him. You know, I mean, I see it with Ozzy. Uh, Ozzy lit up like a light bulb when the fans came in and started talking to him you know he was like boom it was like and and he said it really recharged his batteries you know and you know if that is good for somebody then i'm all for it but when you see somebody behind the table and they look like they don't even know where the hell they are and they're sitting there going and the and person is having to tell them how to spell their name and they're like, yeah that, you remember Nicky rooney at those shows I never saw him really bad, but I met him, and he was not a nice guy. Uh, I met him at one of those Hollywood shows. Yeah. Yeah, he would sit in the corner, and his wife would sort of, it seemed like his wife's sort of scold, younger wife scolded him, and so maybe his children too. But he, boy, did he seem miserable about being there, uh, you know. And sometimes you see these cases, and these people didn't get to cash in. You know, Mickey Rooney was a, a superstar, but he never got to make the money that, actors can make today nowadays you could have one part and you could do the convention circuit for quite some time which is which is great and it's great for fans because we get to meet so many people that we never thought we'd meet sean i gotta ask you some movie questions i'm gonna go see rad right after we get done with this um the bicycle movie <laughs> yes <laughs> today is rad day I, they probably named it 1986 is when it came out Fathom Events is showing it, so I'm going to go see it. I saw it once on VHS. I didn't think it was very good. But it's terrible, but it's so bad. It's great. I mean, <laughs> the prom scene 
of the bicycle dance to send me an angel by what was it real life is real life. is worth the price of admission right there that's so. what i said and i just met the singer for real life his name is david sterry and he's going to come uh -huh. on the show in a couple of weeks but i he was he had movies on a lot of weird soundtracks once bitten and he he was naming all kinds of weird movies that he'd never even seen. I don't think he even saw Rat. But uh, but I thought, yeah, I said, I gotta go and see it. And then I'm thinking tomorrow about seeing the Ghostbusters uh, uh, Frozen Tundra. Would you, do you go see those kind of movies, Sean? Uh, which which kind? Rad? Ghostbusters, or? Would, would you, are you interested in that? I'll be honest with you, I really, I, I'm not that interested in Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. I, I would be willing to I'd be willing to uh, watch. Um, I, I'll watch it on cable. You know. Right. Did you see you the, the last potatoes this weekend? Okay, I'm on. I'm on a live thing right now, but I, there are important questions that need to be asked. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Need to Did know if they had the baked potatoes this weekend. These, are, these are, anyway. Well, you've got to plan ahead. Yeah, you got to plan ahead. Oh. Did There's you a see guy, the guy, guy here that one? does barbecue. That's and he does these fully loaded baked baked potatoes, but he only has so few of them. Got to get one. So. You got to get them before they go. Yeah. Well, you make your reservation. Um, I'm not sure what I think. I saw the afterlife one sort of for the novelty and I thought it was okay. I didn't need to see it ever again. Yeah. The only, the only movies I'm looking forward to right now. Um, I, I'm looking, I, I want to see that. Uh, what's it called? Something. What lies bleeding or something. Is that what it's called? The one, the Kristen Stewart movie oh i don't know someone in the comments is gonna have to answer yeah uh I, I think it's called something lies bleeding something it's like it I, I don't know, it looks like it looks interesting the trailer looks interesting i've heard really good things about it from uh from uh people online saying it's really intense um uh you know the new omen film i got a i got a an invite to go see it on tuesday I don't know if I'm willing to drive all the way to L.A. just to see a movie a couple weeks early. Um, it, yeah. it, the trailer isn't doing it for me, but we'll see. Um, but, you know, I'll watch it. Uh, that, that movie Abigail looks really good, actually. I, yeah. I, I, have you seen the trailer for that? I saw the trailer, and I thought it looked okay. And they just dropped the Beetlejuice trailer today, and... I'm excited. It looks good. A buddy of mine already saw it. He said it's actually great. He he saw he saw that and he saw the crow. He said Beetlejuice Beetlejuice was really good. The crow was total total garbage, as we I think we all expect. So it's a it's a shame. Uh, when I was a kid, I auditioned for a part in the crow. Brandon leaves the crow. It's oh wow! With, yeah. And uh, I was a little young. Uh, but I went to this 92nd Street Y and the casting director, he cast the JFK. And, he, and I was prepared for martial arts and all these things that I thought went with the part, but it wasn't what they were looking for. And at the end of the day, probably better that it didn't work out because everything on that set was bad. The, uh, uh, yeah, I don't have great expectations for that Crow movie. They don't seem like they've done it right since. I still have the original script, which was uh, great. But uh, Beetlejuice looks good to me. I kind of... You know, you feel like they'd screw it up, but you know what? It looks pretty exciting. Yeah, I heard how they handled a couple things, too. Um, Love Lies Bleeding. Yeah, okay, there it is. Um, yeah, I heard how, like, uh, as I asked, is Jeffrey Jones re returning, you know? And the funny thing is, his character is there, but he... <laughs> I don't want to, I don't know if I, well, fuck it. Uh, apparently, apparently he's headless. <laughs> um, so uh, the character is technically there. So, but yeah, uh, I, I, I think there was something to do with a shark accident. Like his head got bit off or something. <laughs> I think it's a great way to, to do it. I, I, uh, I'm interested. I'm, I'm excited. Sometimes some nostalgia um, is a good thing and we're running out of, um, great ideas as it is. Although I do see movies that occasionally surprise me. I found that Megan movie, and I know you represent uh, some of the actresses, but I found that movie entertaining. You know, that's if fun. you're on a plane or something, you know. Well, that's that's what, a, a, you know, much like uh, Megan, that Abigail movie looks like it's a lot of fun, you know. That's what I thought.
Um, and I have a client in that movie, uh, Melissa Barrera, uh, who from the last two Scream movies, she's mm -hmm. she's in that film as well. And, and uh, I'm excited to see it. That comes out in like three weeks, I think. So, yeah, uh, new someone's saying the new Alien movie looks good. I didn't even oh, know that was dude. I completely forgot about it. A hundred percent agree with you. That trailer looks awesome. I'm I'm because I've been pretty the last. I, although I liked Prometheus, I liked. And I liked uh, I liked his vision. I didn't care for all like the alien versus predators and shit like that. I mean, th those were kind of lame. Um, but this new one looks great, and I think it's, it's the guy who directed the Evil Dead remake. I believe the first Evil Dead remake. Yeah. I think I think that's the same guy. Uh, okay, hold on. Here's a question that's an easy one to answer. This is Kendall Lynn. She asks, if Sean was in a band, what would he do? Well, Sean has been in many bands, and he's a drummer. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, The Heathens, which is the band that's the soundtrack for your show, which is, is such a great song and stays in your head. Really mm -hmm. great kind of 90s punk rock uh, uh, feel. Maybe early 2000s. What, when was that? Uh, that was like 2004 to the last show we played. Oddly enough, right here at, at Horror Hound Weekend in, I think, 2017, maybe. It, that was our last show. You know, I haven't played in a long time. And Sunday night, I went to Spencer Charnas' house, the singer of Ice Nine Kills, because he's he been wanting me to come over and jam. And we jammed for like four hours. He just played guitar. And we just played a ton of covers and had a blast. And Christopher Nelson was supposed to come over and play bass, but uh, he hasn't shown up yet. But uh, we were just having a fun time jamming. It sounds great. I, Me and Wednesday, often Wednesday 13, often joke that we should put a little something together to play at these conventions. Have you played drums? I'll play bass. Wednesday will play guitar. And, you know, who, so many of these actors also moonlight as musicians and things. Could be do a real thing. Yeah, I think it would be really let's, fun to see those. Let's get Wednesday to, to come out to Arizona, and we'll do it at that show. And I think John Christ is coming, and John wants to, John was hitting me up about playing guitar at the last Mad Monster Party. We could definitely have a pretty kick-ass jam at, uh, at Mad Monster Party, Arizona. Maybe we get that Stephen to sing a song. You know, I, think Steve, I think Stephen would do it. When my punk band was playing, Stephen always threatened to uh to come out the dates never mixed but uh i think we could get steven to do it and uh it, it would be a lot of fun and wednesday's done that convention before and he was interested and he's available so maybe we can make it into a really fun uh weekend for people to come out it's already ozzy osbourne's there it's already uh gonna be a <laughs> huge event uh okay let's see what else we've got a lot of people yeah it's funny so i went live every day this week and every day it's been a different thing Although Sean can cover everything. Sean can talk music. He can talk uh, conventions. He can talk pop culture. We did which candy was the best decade. You could do that. Uh, <laughs> which know, candy uh, was the best decade? We got these mystery boxes from the 60s, huh. 70s, 80s, and 90s. And we had someone who was born in each decade open them. Oh, wow. It was kind of, it was kind of bullshit. Um, my <laughs> favorite was things like candy cigarettes, though. Oh, but, yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, some of them had repeats in them, so who knows? I think the 80s was probably the best. And then the 90s like, was the beginning of everything sour and everything uh, gummy is what it seemed like. And nowadays, they're just banning every chemical, so nothing's fun anymore. They're getting rid of Skittles, for God's sakes. Come on. Yes, I know. It's, it's, uh, it is crazy. And then uh, I also unveiled these the other day. This is the, do you have this, Sean? Oh, yeah. I... I participated in that i i uh handled some of the uh signing of the mystery cards so they mm -hmm. sent me a free case of those it's very cool and this is called a ventricular card and oh. uh when you move it michael myers is laying down and when you put it up uh -huh. he, he stands up and it's actually pretty cool i think it's the coolest thing in the box when did you get the did you get any autograph cards no, what I, what I, they didn't have that available. All they had was this box, which is called the box of wax packs. There's no wax packs inside. And then I think that this is, I don't know if there's doubles in there or this is one set. I haven't really looked at it that carefully. We, we opened oh. it last, uh, last night. 
but it looks fun. And I said, I've spent $35 on worse things in my life. You've got a Halloween convention. It's a horror convention coming up at the end of the year around Halloween that I want to go to. And I think it's, I want to say it's in Kentucky. Oh, uh, yeah, that looks like a great show because you've got uh, Nick Castle and Dick Warlock. And I asked you last year because at one point Dick Warlock, that's Michael Myers too, uh, retired. And he, he couldn't stop. Did, literally got a text today from him saying, hey, I just got an invite to this con. And what do you think? Should I go to it? And I'm just like, you know, it went from... I only want to do a couple a year to I'm not doing any to I'll do every one that I'm being invited to. It's, 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 uh, Hey, you know, Hey, as long as he wants to do them and he's happy doing them, I'm supportive, but, uh, yeah. He doesn't he's, have dementia. He's, he's pretty sharp and he, yeah. he seems to really enjoy the intention and talking to the people. Um, and he, this is a man in his eighties, right? Not a, yeah. Yeah. I think he's like 84, uh, I think. Yeah, I know. I, that's what I think. Uh, question for Sean. What's the next uh, Horrors Hollow Grounds that we're dropping? Uh, it's going to be hard to top Clockwork Orange. That was a great episode. Believe me, uh, I know that. Like The Clockwork Orange episode is something I've worked on so long and so hard, and it's my all-time favorite movie, that even I know I don't think I'm ever going to be able to top that one. Um but, you know, I'll just continue to keep doing them. I think the next one that will drop that I'm actually editing in my hotel room this weekend I've, and was, have been working on is uh, Near Dark, the vampire film from 1987. Yeah. That's a big cult following for that movie as well and, and an original idea to do. One of the things I like about uh, your show, Hollow, Horror, Horror's Hollow Grounds, is that I'll watch it even if I don't know the movie. Or even if I'm not that familiar, I'm still interested in what you uncover. My whole life, I, you know, I was going to movie locations before anyone knew that this was a thing you film or monetize. I just wanted to see them. I know that it's the same with you. We wanted to go to these places, but I love seeing what they look like now, what your experience is. And again, even if I don't know the movie, sometimes I'll see you do something. I go, you know what? I should go watch that movie. But I, sometimes the deeper, uh, the better it is. And I'm going to Utah in two weeks, Salt Lake for a car show. Steven's appearing at a car show. And I go, well, I know there's some Halloween locations there. I'm just going to watch Sean's show and make some notes. And, and yeah. again, it was great. It's, it's fun to watch. A lot of good stuff there in Salt Lake City. Halloween 4, 5, 6, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Hereditary, which is another episode that I've shot that I need to edit. 3 o'clock high, another episode that I shot that I need to edit. Um, SLC Punk, of course, also yeah. there. Uh, so Better Off Dead, some of it was shot uh, uh, Park City. Um, so, yeah, there's there's some great locations. That's a cool town. I like, I like Salt Lake City quite a bit, actually. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back there. Uh, question, are you going to ever have a member option on your channel? You know, uh, you mean as far as like a Patreon kind of? Thing? Is that well, what I think you mean to the YouTube members ones because there is a chat. You know, I have members who watch here and they pay a few bucks and then they can watch things in advance and they get to have their own emojis and things and stand out in the chat. So it's more of a YouTube thing. Uh, you know, I, I've, I, I don't think I have any. Well, I don't have any plans to. I, I feel like um, I just appreciate people are watching. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it, I, I do pretty well in my business, so I don't need the Patreon thing. I mean, it, it's a nice little when I monetize a, a video, you know, that's that's nice to get a little something, something, because I definitely probably invest more money into making the episode than I get back. But, um, you know, one day if I'm not doing this full time and I and I, I, I have the time, that's the other thing is I don't want to have people pay for something and then I don't have the time to deliver on it. You know what I mean? I don't want the, I, I don't want the pressure. I want to be able to just do my thing when I want to. And if people like it, that's cool. Um, you know, uh, 
you know, it's like the same thing with the merchandise, you know, I, I didn't want to, I, I don't have time to produce and sell merchandise. Um, but people wanted it. So I did the, you know, the, uh, T public thing where it's print on demand and yes, the quality isn't as good. It's, it's, it's for the price and we kept it as low as possible. Um, you know, it's so they can have something, you know, and, and it's so cool seeing people wear the stuff at conventions. Yeah. And stuff. I really appreciate it, but it's more for you guys, not for me. It's not, if you're buying a shirt thinking I'm making money, that's not really what's going on. <laughs> I, I mean, I think I got it set to like a dollar a shirt or something, you know, so it, um, nobody's getting rich. That's for sure. I mess. I remember messaging about it when I did this. It was a fun thing to do. Then when people wanted merch, it wasn't so much that I would make money, but the same thing. People come to see the Steven shows and they meet me, and it's nice to see people represent those shirts. Steven says he wants to wear one. So, um, so you, you know, merch and things like that. Like you said, it's for other people, and no one has to buy it. I'm on here all the time, so the members things do work. I've always said, Sean, your channel would be massive, but you you don't have the time to be on here every day. You have a busy work schedule and the content that you produce is not here I am today at this place. No, it, it's a lot of editing, a lot of traveling and, and um, clearing of uh, getting scenes in the, the, without getting a copyright uh, uh, mark and things. So mm -hmm. it's hard to do it. And your in your channels, it still is incredibly popular. And I think people like um, that the way you do it. Malfunction on YouTube, for those of you who might have watched this long and don't know, Somebody asked your favorite song. I can never answer a question like that. It's just too, but maybe you could. Wow. I have no idea what my favorite song of all time is. I mean, I'd have a hard enough time telling you what my favorite song is from any particular band, um, <laughs> let too. alone my favorite song of all time. Uh, I mean, if I guess, if I'm, oh, wow. I don't know. Um, I mean, God, I don't know. I, I I can throw out a song I love, but I, I don't know if it's my favorite song of all time. There's there's certain songs that, you know, uh, I have an emotional connection to or whatever that make me. I mean, like the song One of My Turns by Pink Floyd from Pink Floyd, The Wall. I just think it's such a powerful song that whenever I sit down and listen to it and really listen to it and the words, I, I well up you know, every time. It's just such an emotional song um, and a sad song, really. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's Walking, uh, we, on, Walking on Sunshine by... Uh, <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> when we were on this cruise we just did, Mark Goodman was one of the hosts, uh, the original MTV VJ. He's going to be on the show also in a couple of weeks. And you know what's crazy? Me, Wait, before yeah. you get in, I saw your pictures with him and Alan Hunter. and You know what's nuts? As long as I've been doing all this shit, as many conventions I've been to, concerts, I've never met a single VJ. So Not weird. One. They would probably do well at shows. I mean, I'm surprised they don't do them more. You know, I'll mention it to Mark. I'll tell you, Sean, when I was on, we'll talk about it more privately, but when I was on that cruise, I said, look, I know a guy, you, who could probably bring you some 80s talent to be on the cruise to do signings and things. And yeah. they, they like that idea. So we'll, we, and you and I have talked about that a little bit in the past. But yeah, uh, Mark Goodman, um, he would do good. Anyway, he said he was going to interview Stephen on the boat. And he said he doesn't like to just ask the same questions. He wanted Stephen to think of three songs that meant a moment in his life. And he goes, not just because you thought it was a great song, but that it reminded you of an incident, uh, incident in your life. Mm. And it made for an interesting interview. I would have a hard time. I'd have to Google years and try to remember things uh, because we hear so much music as it is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to sit down and really think about that. Um, but, you know, there's definitely songs that when I hear them, they take you back to a place, you know, like I'll, I, I, I tell you, every time I hear Rosanna by Toto, mm -hmm. I immediately get transported back to Cypress Skateway. Because that song used to play at Cypress Skateway all the time. It was like one of those, it, it was just that song. It, I, I'm right there back in this roller rink, age, mm -hmm. whatever, 13 years old, you know? So. Yeah, no, that is that is definitely how how it, you remember an incident, uh, a time, I'm saying it wrong, a time where you were based on a song. But 
you'd have to give it some thought. Uh, all right, we're going to wrap up because I got to go see Rad, and you still have a lot of work to do. True. Sean, uh, let's tell people where they can find you. The main thing is on YouTube. They go to Malfunk Sean. You can also search Sean Clark. Yeah, it, I, it's now listed under Sean Clark, but it's at Malfunk Sean on YouTube, on X, on Instagram, at Malfunk Sean. And then on Facebook, it's Sean Clark Official, uh, Facebook.com, Sean Clark Official. Um, so find me there. Horrors Hall Grounds, Thing with Two Heads, the collection. Got a new collection episode coming out next week as well. Finally getting back to the scene. posters. People have been bugging me about finishing my movie posters. So <laughs> it's funny. This yeah. real quick funny story about the movie posters. So people have been bugging me because I started doing them consistently, right? And I got up to the letter J and I stopped. So I, did sh I grabbed a, a portfolio and it was like the last one. It was like the S, the high S is like ST, so movies that start with ST, like Star Wars, to Z. And I just happened to film that one. And I've been sitting on that footage. I couldn't remember how long it had been, but I guess it had been a while because I edited it together. And I realized I shot it in 2020 because I'm talking about people that had died. And I, I had to put little disclaimers in there like, uh, you know, this person has since passed away. This was shot in 2020. Uh, I almost thought, should I reshoot this? But I put so much time and work into shooting it. But no, I the, screw, the, the screwed up part is I'm going out of order now. So I stopped at J. Now I'm going S to Z and I'm going to have to go back. So uh, anyway. Some of the middle ones. I remember you were doing that during lockdown, showing your collection. And I think it's a great, uh, it's a great thing. Uh, I will warn you, if you go to his channel, you're going to have some free time to do some binge watching, some late night binge watching. because it. Uh, it is addictive. There is one other thing, and you'll dig this. So, the, uh, was it last weekend? I think it was last, or the weekend before last. Yeah, weekend before last, I was at uh, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, and Sid Croft came up to me, Sid and Marty Croft, and wants, wants me to be on his podcast. I was blown away. It hasn't happened yet, but he, he invited me. And his assistant like knew who I was and said, oh, we're going to make it happen, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I would be thrilled to be on Sid Croft's podcast. Are you oh, kidding amazing. me? amazing. Yeah. That, he's at the next Hollywood show I saw. They're, yeah. they're doing another themed uh, thing. Yeah. It's, it's, that would be great, though, because uh, you have a good collection of Sid and Marty yeah. Croft stuff. Too. Absolutely. So anyway, check out Sean Clark. Uh, at, right after this, uh, I'm going to watch. A little bit of the premiere of My Life on the Road, day six on the Monster Rock Cruise. That link is in the description. You can watch along in the comments. And uh, Sean, uh, uh, when we say goodbye to these people, I'm going to stay just for a second so you can tell me who the guest is at that convention. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> I want to know. But I'm not telling anyone else to so don't message me. You'll be surprised like everybody else. If you're in uh, in, in the uh, Sharonville, right? That's what it's called. Yeah. area stop by and go to a great uh, horror convention and again sean updates on his social media of the ones he's going to be at and mad monster party in arizona we could have a we could have some jamming and some fun and some rock legends uh, all for a good time so thank you so much sean i really appreciate you uh stopping by my pleasure thanks for having me yeah okay and we'll uh, like comment subscribe those things and i'll see you at the live uh